Okay, I'll uh, call the meeting to order at, oh, must be about 3.40. Uh, <laughs> welcome everybody as we try to figure out how to use this new technology as seamlessly as possible. It's very strange not seeing anybody. Um, did anybody have any changes to the agenda? And we were doing this sort of as an extra meeting to get particularly to get the uh, the highway summer work plan organized and going in the right directions and to take care of a couple of things that we need to, the liquor licenses and things that we need to make sure we get signed and out in a timely manner with the optimism that there will be a summer of liquor license sales. So does anybody need to add anything or do we have, uh, uh, let's see, Brian. I think Ryan, you get you get to be our public right now. <laughs> um, need to change anything, or we'll just start go ahead with an update on the on the pandemic locally and what's going on and the impacts of that. Ron, is that you and Carol? Yeah, I can start that. So uh, we've been having Friday three three thirty meetings, uh, which are good to have a check-in so i won't go over all of that what i'm muted oh. no, you're not you're open Carol. Check it. <laughs> so um so we won't go over the whole friday meeting but we do have uh some local actions if you will the the sheriff is working with the hyde park helpers the Feds have released some new information on this table. conference is no longer being recorded. <laughs> I don't know if that's this true. This conference he's will now be recorded. So the the issue is the um, is really for Allie and I to keep working on. There's some mandated things that are happening from the Feds. So uh, families first legislation, uh, April first. All the employees need to be notified of the, the rights and responsibilities of employers, which do include some paid time off and some restrictions and some reasons. There's six six reasons to take time off and get paid under the mandated rules. The select board can certainly go above and beyond those, but um, we're still reviewing those. So we'll, there is a notice going out to all employees that you, some may have seen already. Um, as far as next steps, I think we're going to keep the Friday afternoon meetings as a check-in. So if you do want to monitor the most current happenings, uh, that's a good time to listen in on those meetings. Um, that is pretty much it. We're not taking, you know, other than the volunteers in the community, they're trying to get to people that need help. We're not organizing anything as a as the town. We do have an issue with the public buildings and access. Uh, the the ball fields up at McFarland, the Grange Hall. I mean, there's all, there's, there's more kind of gathering spots that the select board hasn't acted on yet. So part of that discussion, and this is just for the board members to talk about is, um, we have limited emergency services going now. That's the highway department. Uh, the village offices are operating for water, sewer, electric. Uh, Kim can talk to what she's experiencing in her office, but we have um, a decision to make on, to be clear, I guess, with the community as to what does the select board wanna do with fa facilities and buildings. Uh, close it all to public use is another one, uh, was is an option. So if you did that, uh, obviously we wouldn't have strong enforcement of it, but it would at least be a clear message to people that getting together at the ball fields in groups, uh, coming into the town buildings for non-essential is not allowed, uh, those kind of things. And I, I'm just gonna give that over to the select board. There are, and, and maybe Kim can talk first about what challenges she's having in her office. Am I asking, can you tell us what's going on? Am I unmuted? Yes. Okay. Um, so, some of the challenges that we're facing um, are uh, title researchers who are um, being some some are being rather pushy about wanting to come in and do title searches uh, because they have clients 
that are getting great low new interest rates and they don't want to lose the rate. The problem is banks and similar financial institutions and legal services are on the governor's list of not critical services. So, you know, we're, we're trying to protect ourselves in the office. We're trying to protect each other. We have people here in the office who have underlying health conditions. We have families at home. Um, so we initially, I stopped people from coming in and we were making appointments for people. Um, I went so far as to put our records online and I asked them to do as much research online as possible before they came in, really to limit their time in the office. And that worked. And as soon as the governor did his stay home, stay safe executive order, and that uh, list of critical workers was released and clerks across the state saw that attorneys and banks, mortgage companies, you know, weren't on that list. We were all kind of like, well, now what do we do? Um, we're not supposed to have face-to-face -to -face business with this sector of business. And so we're closing our doors. We've been here um, helping by fax, by email. If they can tell us a book and a page, we can fax it to them. Um, we've been doing dog license renewals, um, giving tax information over the phone, faxing tax bills. We did do a marriage license last week or the week before, I don't remember. Um, but even marriage licenses are now not critical. Um, it might be critical to the, to the couple, but according to the governor, you know, that type of business is not critical. Um, so, you know, I'm, I personally am finding it hard, um, trying to, I guess, you balance the needs and need of my health. And that'll be yeah, a staff of people in this building. Right. Let me, this is Susan. First of all, if you're, can you do marriage licenses? Can they be done online? Or they have to come no, in? No, unfortunately, the statute requires one of the parties to sign in front of the clerk. And so that's what we did. We made, we faxed that person the application. They filled it out and faxed or emailed it back. So, and so Kristen typed everything up. So literally, when the guy came in, I don't think he was in the office five minutes because all he had to do was review it, sign it, pay his fee, and off he went. You know, sometimes it's 15 to 20 minutes, depending on, did they fill it out before they came in? Are they standing there waiting to do it? So, you know, we, we maximize keeping that person out of the office as much as possible by doing, having them do as much possible remotely. Well, and you can also give them a clipboard and tell them they're doing it outside and to knock on the, on the window when they're, when well, they're ready. <laughs> we would do that if that's what it came to. I've got clipboards here yeah. and I'm ready to do that if we had to. Yeah, yeah. Um, let me in, in turn. It, it pretty much has been, you know, and I've been very polite letting them know, you know, I understand that you're not on the list of the governor's critical workers and I'll do what I can to help you, but I'm not opening my doors and I, I'm sorry, I can't let you come in. And, you know, once I kind of say that they realize that I, I know, I know that they're not critical. They know that I know they're not critical, but I'm willing to help them. So for the most part, they've kind of backed off a little bit, but there's still one guy hung up on me this morning. He's like, well, okay, sorry. <laughs> that That's not your loss, Kim, it's his. <laughs> yeah, well, well, and it's customer, so. <laughs> um, so, so what Kim, um, I think rest of the board just talking about this now, I I think it's totally appropriate. I mean, you close the building and people aren't allowed in, period. And if somebody's giving you a hard time with that, Kim, just give them my phone number and I'll be happy to talk to them. Okay. I, I, I mean, I think, you know, this world is hard for everybody to get used to and everybody thinks they're special. And we all are special in our own ways, but um, we're not special enough to get into the office. So when you say close the building, are you talking, I mean, I've con I'm considered it, I, I've closed my office. So with Allie not being here and Ron not being here, you know, 
pretty much the buildings closed because the village is also closed their services right. they're helping over the phone and you know ain't dropping stuff so are you saying close to the public but also close to the employees and and the town employees are working from home including Kristen and I or are Kristen and I still coming in and doing what we're doing I, I think in reality that's up to you and Kristen I think when the building is closed um, you coming in and if you guys I mean, I would think you ought to be safe there, but if you, under any circumstances, don't feel that it's safe for you to be there, then you don't need, you guys don't need to be there. I mean, okay. it's, in some ways, it's that simple. Um, yeah. I think that this is, you know, it's really, it, it's, um, it's, it's your call, but yeah. I would say basically having a building shut down like that is you're probably as safe as you are at home. Yeah. Okay. Kim, it's Brian Shackett. Hi. What's what, hi? What's your comfort level? Um. Well, so currently it's just Kristen and I, and we're trying to keep our distance. Um, and you know it's, we're doing okay. But you know my daughter works at Shaw's grocery store. <laughs> you know she's a cashier. Oh, gee. So yeah. you know I she comes home from work and she's decontaminating herself, and I'm running around behind her wiping everything she touches as she heads into the shower so you know i and that's kind of what we're we're doing here everything we touch we wipe down as soon as we're done with it um so i i as long as the building is shut and nobody can come in um i'm okay but you know we still have to go to the post office every day and get the mail and thankfully the post office has been pretty quiet um but you know we get packages and there's interaction with the post office and you know all of that all of that extra interaction is extra interaction um dangerous so i i, I don't know what the answer is okay um i was trying to get a feel from you on uh on what your comfort level is and and i know of uh um how, how you're feeling and what you expect to uh um you know from the public that sort of thing but um so you're okay with um uh people coming in and signing marriages li license or not? no no okay i don't want anybody so, coming to i wouldn't even let my daughter come into the door this morning to drop something off for me um, so that answers it that, that yeah. answers the my, my question is and and, and my suggestion would be is that door really gets locked. It already has then been have for to... a week and a half. Okay. So Kristen oh, and I that, have talked that, about um, potentially, you know, to limit even our interaction between the two of us, we've talked about rotating shifts, whether it's we each are here half a day every day or you know, we she works one day, I work another day. That way, you know, we're still answering phones and we're still helping by email or fax or, you know, and whoever is not here and whoever is at home is working remotely, whether it's, you know, connecting and doing whatever you can or doing some training online because you're at home and have that ability. Um, but we've talked about doing that as well, just so that the phones are getting answered and recording is getting done and dogs are getting licensed and, you know, all of these aren't critical health wise but if we were to shut the office down for three weeks or even longer now that the president has said april 30th what does that mean for you know the states are we going to go to april 30th who knows but if we're shut down for a month and doing very limited stuff from home when we came back we'd have a month's worth of recording we'd have a month's worth of dog licenses it would be really a nightmare for just the two of us to try and catch up um so even if we're rotating shifts somewhat um, and doing the bare bones minimum the bare bones minimum is better than coming back and having this huge pile whatever that may be i understand I like yeah I, I, yeah i and i would think it would make sense to to alternate days instead of splitting the day yeah well we talked about that yeah yeah yeah, I would think that would just be easier in, in terms of, of of virus germ everything control instead of splitting halfway through a day. 
Um, yeah. And I think you're absolutely right. And in terms of picking up stuff at the post office and mail and that kind of exposure, I don't, and, and again, that's what you, is, um, and of course, a lot of the stuff they say, if, you know, if, it, if you let it sit for a couple of days, that's sort of going to take care of it. Um, yeah. And if, and, and if Christian is, is, uh, is less vulnerable than you are, then, you know, maybe she should be the one who picks up the mail and you can pick up the mail and leave it sitting outside in the, you know, for two days before you bring it inside. Yeah. Any of those sorts of things. And I'm, I'm sure you will find Vermont will go to the, will go to the end of April. So we're looking at anyway, the end of April. So another month of doing this. And, right. And again, we can get part way through it and, and you can, you can change the schedule anytime you need to change the schedule. That's it. I mean, as Brian is saying, it comes down to what you're comfortable with and your risk factors. <laughs> if your daughter's working at Shaw's, you may be safer in the office. <laughs> Just bring my cot, my pillow in. <laughs> yes, <that's right. laughs> hey, Susan. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think that's a good idea to switch these out one one day, one the other day. Yeah, I would I would think that would work. And is there uh, there must be a sign on the door that's saying that it's closed? But there is oh. there another or have they developed a better sign that says no? That means no one is coming in the office. Yeah. So the first sign that I put up there, and Karen and the village put up a sign as well. Um, the sign was basically the office is closed. We'll make appointments for marriage licenses, title research, that kind of stuff. And then I took the sandwich board that we usually put down at the driveway for taxes, and I put municipal office is closed, call for information. So I drag that out every morning and drag it back in every night. And um, when I took when I took away the ability to make appointments, I changed the signs, I changed the voicemail. So, um, the, you know, I've been updating that and I've been putting stuff out on the front porch forum. And even though the town doesn't have a public Facebook page, I have one and I've been putting that out there for, you know, the people that are friends with me on Facebook and I've asked them to share and some have. And so just trying to get the, and the newspaper and the radio station, just trying to get the word out any way that we can that, you know, the situation has changed. Okay. Sounds sounds like we're we're okay to go for the time being. Yeah. So I'm sure you'll probably address this somewhere else in the meeting, but one of my other concerns and I've talked to Ron about it and he kind of addressed it in an email that um we just haven't had a chance to talk about. Um, you know, one of my concerns is just making sure that um, you know, if if Kristen's working back and forth from home and on the days that she is working from home because she doesn't her but she doesn't have um the vpn the connection the internet speed at her house is not good enough for the vpn connection to connect her to her desktop here so we're trying to find things for her to do for the days that she is home but you know if she can't squeak out eight hours a day maybe it's it ends up being six hours or you know whatever um I want to make sure that she's getting paid for the full 40 hours because it's not, you know, her choice right. to be right. home. Um, she right. would be here every day if it were her choice. Right. Well, well and, and part of that, depending on, as she, as she learns things, Kim, in your comfort level, um, if, you know, if you want to have her come in three days of the week and you come in two days of the week, you can yeah. shift that around any way you want. Okay. Yeah. So, and you could give her a lot of good direction from home. If you, if you just reach a point, that's what you want to do. I just, I, I feel this is totally your discretion. I, I completely agree. I think if I were you, I would definitely not want to come back to a month or two months piled up. You'd never get caught oh. So, no. so coming in and just sort of being able to get the basics done is uh, is fine, and and I I appreciate you doing that because you don't have to. Um, but I think doing that and and anything that any of us can do that makes the world seem a little bit normal right now is I you know I think is helpful to everybody as a whole. But right. but again, you take you take care of yourself, and if, if 
you know, if she comes in more days and you're working from home, don't whatever you guys work out, just okay. go ahead and work out and let Ron and okay. I know what you're doing. That's just so we know what you're doing. But I I I have complete confidence in you guys sorting out what's get what's what's best and and you're right, we probably need a motion to make sure that it's understood you know, that we're we're paying everybody yeah. their regular pay. We're not yeah. you know. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, did um, Roland? Did you have a comment on the public facilities and closing them, or are you still there? I'm still there. I'm listening. Um, the only thing I can throw out there on is I'm not doing nothing now. I'm pretty much at home. If Kim needs anything, she could call. I would be glad to pick up the mail. I would be glad to do anything I could do to get it down there to the town clerk's office for them or anything. But I think I agree with what she said, and I agree with everything. So, you know, they've got it pretty well under control, I think. And she needs anything. I'm here. Thank you, Roland. Yeah, yeah so you're right, Roland. That could, that could be a good idea to set up a system where you pick up the mail and we just let the mail sit for a couple of days before it gets answered, because that's part of this whole, you know, just the, if anything's on it, it doesn't last that long. So whatever it, that time frame is or packages, just let them just let them sit for a couple of days before they actually go in the office and and uh, and and they deal with them. Yeah, my Kim can get a hold of me. She's got my number. Um, you know, okay. we can work out something if it if it helps to do okay. anything. I'm I'm pretty much done. I'm pretty much to home here myself. So okay, thank you. Uh, Susan, uh, we probably should take a vote on. Uh, Two two different things. One is the closing the public access facilities and buildings that are owned by the town, so you, you catch them all with you know, ball fields, Grange Hall, etc. And then um, you have the special provisions for uh, village utilities and town highway crew and uh, the town clerk's office in regard to the bare minimum type um, things you just talked about then the pay issue is really being directed at this point starting april 2nd from the federal level where there's a unfunded mandate basically at this point for 80 hours uh, per employee to use in response to the covid um, so we'll we're sort of forced to do that anyway so i don't having people make up their regular weeks is part of the federal mandate so i don't the, the the issue isn't really a board issue it's a mandated issue so we don't have to vote on that i just want people to be aware that that's happening sort of as we speak so allison and i are, are reviewing that and we'll get back to everybody in the next day or two about how to how that's going to work timesheets should have come in today with cto time or COVID time for anybody that couldn't make up their regular work so Again, this is all a pretty fluid, but we're sorting it out. So the, the one vote on the table is the closing public buildings and uh, facilities with with minor exceptions that I just mentioned. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Abstaining? Okay. Um, I, you know, I think it, it might not hurt because we we took the stand early that we were going to keep folks at their regular pay and we'd sort it out. And I wouldn't mind having that on the record so it doesn't look like when they're looking back at history that the federal government made us take care of people, but that um, it, was, it was our choice to take care of people. Yeah, I think there's I think there's two layers. I think there's two layers to that. The federal mandate is. Uh, is a test really if there's six different ways that would qualify under the federal and then there's the other category which i think you're talking about is when those six tests aren't met but for some reason the town feels it's covid related that you'll make up that difference too so it's a two-layer two-layer thing there is uh you did start doing that the week before so this is really the first payroll 
and the new one doesn't start till April 2nd. So you're about two weeks ahead of the federal government making people whole, if you will. And then after April 2nd, you'll have some federal mandated hours and then your motion would cover the the on the, the other category. <laughs> the seven, be on the well, this if if a person cannot meet the six tests, then Susan's proposing a seventh uh, qualifying, which would be um, we we've determined that it's COVID related, so we're going to cover you up to your regular hours. So there's okay. So it's a little it's a little confusing, but basically it's mandated for the first six, and then if those aren't met, I think what Susan's implying by this vote is that if it doesn't meet those six, then the town will keep people at their regular um, hours. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, and I think doing that, then just everybody, you know, has has the security of knowing that they're okay. Thank you. So I guess we need we need some kind of a motion there. I'm not quite sure what it is, Ron. <laughs> I think it's the the select board. It's a retroactive uh, vote of the board uh, to to retroactive being that we started this um, on the 22nd. Well, actually the 23rd of March, and the and recognizing that the federal mandate is effective on April 2nd. So the the motion would be the to make people whole for COVID related reasons uh, retroactive to March twenty third, and the federal stuff will take care of itself. So making so making, we'll, making people whole is what you're talking about. Yeah. Who who's Second. that? Roland, Roland and Brian. Yeah. So I think it was Roger. It was me. Roger. I did it as well. Brian did it as well. Okay. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. Good. Now let's let's start talking about summer. Oh, okay. I, I can start that. I think um, Mark and I talked today, and Brian and uh, Mark have talked I think with Roger Barry so the where we left it on the 16th of March was that there needed to be some decisions made about how to proceed on a few things they're listed on the agenda uh, signs and center road culverts and prospect street work uh, Fitch Hill project working with the water department which I haven't gotten an update on that yet to see if they're delayed um, so those kind of things and that's kind of where we're at. I think we need to know if we're going to go out to bid so we can start working on that. It's a perfect time to get out to bid if we need to hire a contractor. So I don't know if Mark has anything to say or if Brian, Brian, you're going to lead this. I'm not sure who's going to. Yes, I'll, I'll go ahead and lead it. Now, as far as the signs are concerned, um, I, I would like to say that, um, that uh, Department of Corrections will do it um, when they're available. Okay. Okay. Uh, because we can't put a specific time on it, but I'm hoping that'll be one of our first projects when we start back up uh, to go ahead and do that and using some of the equipment that we talked about that uh, maybe we could borrow from the town of Morrisville to set those signs. Okay. So in, okay. in, in doing that, do we need to do like that part of the contract that we do with um, with corrections yes that, that would be um <clears throat> that would be the um uh general labor contract okay. we have two different contracts one for lawn care and then there's a general labor type contract and that one's already in in place um okay i remember yeah it's somewhere in the fall that it needs to be renewed but uh it'd be covered underneath that one gotcha okay okay and then uh the next one is the um Center Road, I believe. And yep, the uh, culvert. Yep. Yep, the culvert, yep. And so this is the the proposal or suggestion that I have uh, come up with. And um, so I believe there's uh and Mark can correct me or not, but I believe there's about twenty eight culverts uh that need to be replaced on Center Road. 
And um, I found that the lower half towards the Morrisville side has the majority of them. Okay, so if we decide that uh, we need to um, break up the project or anything based on funding, that um, we can base it, like maybe do the lower half first and then the upper half or something to that effect. Um, as far as uh, the project, I would suggest that we uh, um, do it in this way. We uh, put down a layer of uh, six inch layer of, of um, crusher run gravel from our pit onto the, uh, the whole surface. And then we have it all ground with um, uh, a reclaim, ground together. And then we have it uh, compacted. No, 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 let me back up. We don't have a comment. We take out the culverts after we have it all ground together, okay? We take out the culverts that we can afford to, to do. And then those are put into place, and then we compact the the layer of ground uh, material, and then we put chloride onto it, and then we let it set for the summer. And then in the fall, prior to cold season, cold weather, we uh, put a two inch sub layer of pavement on top of that. And now, if we can't get the whole thing done, we leave that in place as is. And then we do another section of it in the same manner. And then uh, the following year, we put our final coat over the top of everything. After we get done the, the, the grinding of the surfaces and replacing of the culverts in there. Um, the cost of that, um, the reclaiming, based on uh, what information was provided to me, we're looking at a price around 51,000 for just the reclaiming process. Then we're looking at a, uh, I'm not sure, but we have to put chlor, I know we have to put chloride on it. And then there's a labor for uh, grading um, as, as it compacts, we'll have to be grading it. Uh, I'm not sure of the frequency, it depends on the, uh, how well it's ground together and how, how fast it packs together. I usually, I found that it usually packs together pretty quick. And then, uh, um and the crusher run would be coming from our pit that's what i have any comments mark are you there yes yes <laughs> so i've got a couple of issues with this project so one being way brian's talking about doing it is going to put everything else in town on the back burner from resurfacing our roads because we weren't planning on taking this gravel we crushed last year, put it on center road. So that's gonna make us shorter results. And the same thing with my paving money, if we're gonna keep taking out for reclaiming that all over town we've reclaimed and it's cracked all the heck everywhere. It hasn't held up. We live in Vermont, it's gonna crack. I don't feel that center road has a terrible base. I think it's just the lack of paving it and when it should have been paved. And I think we're gonna run into the same problem all over town because we're gonna put everything on the back burner. If I'm gonna take every paving fund for the next three or four years, put in center road, the next three or four years, we didn't do anything else in town. And I think it's gonna come back to haunt us. Um, can I add something, Mr. Brian, again? Um, I'd like to add that um, because of the length of time that that pavement has been pretty much crushed and destroyed putting a layer on top of that I think it would be better to blend it all together to make it into one surface in there and I have talked to Ken Harvey Ken did mention that uh, uh, the sub layer was all replaced with at least uh, 20 to 24 inches of uh, gravel all the way up through there in some places it was uh, a little bit thicker he said by uh, um, uh, can, uh, uh, Howard Menashe's in there was a little bit thicker. Um, also, he mentioned that uh, when we do the culvert by the um, Gowan Road, that uh, that culvert should be extended by 10 feet as well on there. Again, back to that comment. That's a 36-inch culvert he's talking about, Brian, just so you're aware. 
and I agree with yeah, that 100%. So, okay. But did Ken, did Ken say anything to you about fabric in that robe? He did not. He did not say anything, and it didn't come up in my conversation with Ken. Because the majority of it, I do know, is underdrained, and I assume it's okay. fabric as well. It would have made sense. Ryan, do you know if that – Ryan might know, too, by doing – couple covers up here in the past. Ryan, are you still on air? Are you aware if that's got fabric in it? I think some sections have fabric in it. Okay. I don't know if the whole road does, but I think there's some sections that they fabric. Correct. That's what I, I believe, too. I think the upper section is, and I'm not sure about the bottom section. And the upper section's all under drain in there as well. Mark, we had, um, in previous conversations about this, had talked about um, contracting with somebody outside to come in and, and um, them saying, really, thinking the first year of the project is, is getting all the culvert work done up the whole road and then doing something that gets us through the winter and then paving it all the next year. Correct. But um, the, well, the reclaiming is like seventeen thousand a mile just for reclaiming itself. Well, that's not another grading or anything involved with it. It's I three point three miles it. long. I'm sorry, it's three point three miles long. So, so let me come. Why? This is where ignorance is bliss on my part. Um, why would I want to do anything before I pulled all the culverts and had them all replaced? Well, the one one thing I was thinking, Susan, is that um, uh, if we were to do the reclaiming, then you wouldn't have to cut through the current pavement. It's already done. Then you can get in there and, and just dig it out. And you're not cutting pavement because it's already gone and it's already been crushed up. That's that's one thought. Right. That would save a lot of hours by doing that. You have everything reclaimed. You wouldn't have to go in there. It probably takes two or three guys to cut that pavement. Probably somewhere is around three to four hours per per culvert. So um, that's not a bad idea, Brian. So you so you do that first, and then I'm going to and then we we'll, we hire somebody to come in and do all the culvert work, so the road crew is turned loose to go to go do all the other projects in town that are demanding attention. Absolutely, yes. You know, and, you're probably gonna, you're probably Susan, you're probably going to have a short summer of construction anyway with what's going on, and now they're saying it's going to be the end of. April here, it, it, the way things are going in another month, it will be the end of July before we, you know, it's going to be a short season. So I think, I think myself that you ought to concentrate now on one thing before, you know, you don't know what's going to happen. So if you concentrate on one thing, spend your money on one thing, do a good job on the center road, because I wrote up that thing myself and it's broke right off. And you look at some of these roads around that I have done in the last few years, go and ride the Cadiz Falls Road. Go ride the Cadiz Falls Road. We blacktopped right over that. Just ride it now. That was three years ago. Some of these roads, if you don't do a good job on them, you don't refer to some the way you're supposed to do it, this is what you're going to end up with. I think Brian's got a hell of a good idea. Um, so you know, he's putting crap on it. He's loving his roads up. He's um, grinding it the way it's supposed to be. That's what they're telling you to do in these courses that we got, us guys have been to. They've done it in other towns. It turned out to be really great. I know it's a little bit more money, but I can tell you that center road definitely needs some attention. <laughs> So, so we should, yeah. What, what's happened? Why can't we uh, 
Why can't we get a bid for the contractor to do that whole road and everything and do a bond vote, get it over with, so the guys can do the other work that they got to do? So otherwise, we're just going to keep going behind and behind and never get the paving all done that we need to get done. And I'm sure that up. most of the people would probably agree on it. You know, and get, yeah. the, and get the money and do the whole thing they want to get it over with. That's a good idea too, Roger. I know, I know that, and there's no more taxes and stuff, but it seems like we need to, we need to start putting money back into our town and start cutting some other places back. Well, I'm, I'm not sure. Here's, here's, here's what we need to, we need to know because if, if we, uh, if we did the reclaiming and we did all the culverts and then the whatever we need to go to go over the top of that, um, is that is that the sort of thing that we could just contract that out to one thing so that our guys are just and and find out what that would cost? Go to the of course it'd be pretty sure I don't know turn around to get a to get a bond. Um, um, again, it's to figure out how much money we need. Because I appreciate with Mark, he doesn't. We don't want to spend all our money on this and let everything get further behind. So if we know how much money we're talking about, it may it may not be that large a bond that we actually need to ask for. Right. Because we're Ron, we're coming up to a time when we go into uh, we're eligible for our high end of the paving grant, right? Yeah, the class two program is open. Uh, they just extended the grant deadline to May 15th. So we have a little more time that was originally going to be due April 15th. So now that they pushed it to May 15th for the class two money, that road is eligible for 175,000. And we definitely are, if not, we're not due this year, I'd be surprised. Right, but thinking even if we weren't doing the pay, if we're just doing the reclaiming and the culverts this year, and then the the bulk of the paving costs is the following year, we should have that 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 higher amount of money that we're eligible for to take care of sort of additional costs of paving, but not leave Mark and the crew in a hole for everything else that they're trying to do. Right. Yeah. No. It's, there's. It's definitely still a two-year project, uh, ideally, to let that road settle if you if you grind up the top with all the culvert work. You can, you can do all the culvert work, Ron. You could grind it, do all that. And then just, just put a base on it for this, for this year. Do the top and next year. That's what I mentioned. That was the, the two inch yeah. base, we, the sub to sub base. Right. Just, just also, you gotta start up. thinking about the other road from up past the Millers up, well, further out from Millers, and up to the North High Pie Road, that road's going to be shot in another couple of years. Well, it's pretty you know, you got you got to take care of what you got to take care of now to do a decent job on what you're doing because in another five years, you're going to be right back to where you are if you go up there and just banging it out. In another four, four or five years, it's going to be all cracked up. Go down and look, well, look at it. Uh, borrow the money or whatever we have to do to do the whole. Uh, center road and yeah. then we could um pay that back as we go along and plus have some money to start working on the other road yeah we idea. talked about when you know we talked about that three months ago or four months ago roger about that we've been talking about it for two years two years no, okay. it's gonna happen i agree with roger on that <laughs> no I, I think do a good job guys while we're doing it that's what I mean. Yeah, but Roger's right. correct. Uh, the Centerville, what Roger's talking about, from Miller's all the way up to Mead Road to the Centerville dirt, that's going to be so far. That's why I'm saying I can't put the bond bolt would be a different situation, but I can't take my paving money for the next four, three or four years putting in the center road because we're going to go way behind everywhere else. That's what my point was. Yeah. Like I said, the, center, the Centerville road, is, it ain't going to be long. You guys shimmed it up, but here's here's what we need, okay, is a spreadsheet of the cost of doing the Centerville Road properly. Figuring the 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 reclaiming and all that and getting all the culvert work done 
and and getting a getting a coating on it before that happens. That sort of needs to be one big project, and then and then we could extrapolate what what paving it properly the next year would be. And it seems to me that that would be what we'd be needing to ask for the for a bond. And that right. would leave our regular we, that would leave our regular money um, for for Mark and the and the crew to do the rest of the stuff. So what we need is a quick but accurate estimate on what that cost is. And I'd, while we're doing it, I'd go ahead and throw in the cost of paving as well, even though we see that separately. Because if it again, depending on the amount of money, uh, it, it may not cost that much to go for the to get the additional paving dollars to just do that as one big project and and have it taken care of. There will certainly never be a better time to borrow money than there is right now. Yes, right. So so can Mark? Can you and you and Brian and Ron and Rolly and I don't know who, but in a in a week come up with here's what it is because how long would it take to do a turnaround to do a special meeting to do a bond vote there's what ties us up well the problem yes. with that is is i do know a lot of these outfits are shut down right now i don't know if we'll be able to get somebody up here to look at it this week mark so i can look into it yeah um i told you that um, wickham was up there to eat remember i told you and we could get a hold of um we could get a hold of him, and I know he was measuring the road. Remember, I told you last week. Oh, what's his first name? Warren. 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 Yeah. Is his first name Warren? Oh, it was working for Whitcomb there. No. Hello, oh, Whitcomb. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, anyway, he was doing it up to Eden, measuring that road last weekend. Last yeah, week. I know a lot of things happened this week with all these payment companies that are shutting down, but I can look into it. But I'm not saying that. Well, I think that, no, but I know that we got to look into it. Yep. Okay, uh, Mrs. Bryan, um, Mark, what could I do to lessen the load to, to get what we Take need on to get? Road project. <laughs> um, I'm not sure yet. So, with that being said, you know there is some help. You know, say Hudson's for a, just an example. They've got the whole excavate and everything, so they might want to look at rolling it into one whole something. Or do you guys want to keep everything set? I mean, I don't know if you're going to. Mark, you got the right idea. Mark's got the right idea. Listen to it. Yeah. So, with that being said, you know, we might get a lot better deal. He can have a reclaimer come in. He can have the excavators come in, kind of like, kind of like that stove project, the you know, 100 or whatever. We might get a better deal. I don't want to throw anybody under the bus, but if they have all the equipment to do it, it may be a huge saving for the taxpayers as well to do the whole project lump sum. Well, and I would think somebody might be much more interested in the job if they, again, it's a whole job. Here's what we want you to do. Right, right. Yeah, yes. So let's look into it. We beat this around the mouth. I agree. Sounds good. I'll be in touch with you, okay. Mark, uh, to, to help you if I can in any way. Okay. Okay, let's see if by the end of the week we can we can have a guesstimate, and then, Ron, you and I need to go to work to figure out how fast we could do a bond vote. Yeah, we'll, we'll look at all those options. The one wild card is something that Mark and I worked on today, which is three, we think three of the culverts might need some sizing done. So in 2019, the select board approved the road and bridge standards, which set a 50 year minimum design standard for all culverts. So when we replace culverts, we have to run the numbers on that. And we, at least on three of them, we think we'll need some outside help to make sure that those are, um, that they're properly sized or whether they'd be upgraded. If they get much bigger than 36, 48 inches, somewhere in there, the project starts to change a little bit and become a much more expensive project. So we have to be careful with sizing and making sure that we don't have 
a, a bigger project buried inside this big, this full length reclaim project that you're talking about. So we'll, we should know that by the end of the, hopefully by the end of this week. Good. And Su Susan, back just real quick, back up to uh, the road signs. I've got a price on them as far as the sign post, the hardware, the speed limit sign. Those are all coming in about a hot. $106.40 per sign, just for your awareness. Okay. Okay. That was how much, Mark? $106.40. That's the hardware, the breakaway post, the sign post, and the sign. $106.40. Okay. How many signs? So that one sign. No, but I mean, uh, do we have a total of how many signs we need to purchase for that price? Um, yeah, we do out here someplace. Let me see. If, oh, oh, 81. I believe. 81. Yeah, I think that's that part. Yeah. That's 8,667. I think somebody can do it cheaper than that. I mean, the work crew would. This well, is no labels. No, that's just the cost of the sign. That's just the cost of the sign. The cost of the post, the <laughs> sign, the hardware. No labor. Oh. Uh, oh. Can we do half this year and half next year? Well, my other thing I want to bring to your attention is we've been trying with our sign, our in our sign budget, is to upgrade our road signs. You know, we're trying to get those all in compliance. We've got a lot of the town down. We still got a lot to go. So. We're taking this out now. We're putting that on the back burner if it's coming out of my same sign budget. What what different signs are you talking about, Mark? Besides these, the speed limit sign. It's, it's the reflectiveness and the size of the sign. So, like, I know everything in the village, and we're that's kind of our last thing because of the okay. Grant Wood the Village on Radio and Main Street. But all the signs, uh, well, like Garfield, we did last year, I believe. We did uh, Jones uh, off Battle Road the prior year. But we still, uh, Norhead Park Road got done last year. But we still have quite a few more to go to be all in compliance with those. And plus, yeah, the signs, all the, the stolen signs. signs as well. Yeah. Yeah. The signs need to be what's called re-reflective, and those are the ones that really like blind you when the lights hit them at night, just so people have an understanding of what it is. Well, we let's see. We know through corrections we've got a work crew to do the to do the the speed limit signs. Install. Um, and um, Mark, you have. These are just other signs throughout the town that you guys replace the sign, right? The posts are already there, but we're literally replacing the signs. Correct. They're not uh, majority of them. They're not a sign post. It's just the sign itself. Okay, and that's I think is that five thousand dollars a year you have in your budget for that? I believe so. I have to go in and check it. Okay. Okay. I'm. Ron, maybe if you remember, I'm thinking that it was they've sort of budgeted five thousand a year. Um, okay, someplace we're going to have to make we're going to have to make a choice. And of course, <laughs> Brian, you don't know how long it's going to take in, to literally how long it takes to do a sign. So it may well be that you know that doing part of it this year and part of it the following summer what is what makes sense literally for the amount of time that it takes and i don't i don't know how we end up with an estimate of that until we actually try it yes it's five thousand yeah five thousand a year um for signs i don't think mark i don't think you have any expenses oh you might have some miscellaneous expenses current year through june 30. or did uh, you do it did, did you do a big? Uh, I have, no, I think we have a, some left in there. I didn't buy all the road signs for this year yet. Yeah, so you have this year's money, and then you'll have five thousand on July one. Most so you're looking at the, 
you're looking at a total of probably around 9,500 for uh, the whole kick and caboodle install and and uh, purchasing. Yeah, I think if if uh, I think there's almost enough money if you look at a two year, maybe even a three year phase in to get up to date with that speed ordinance while you're still allowing Mark to update his of the existing signs. I think I think it can work over if not two years, maybe a third year, then you don't have to mess with the budget. Right, right. Okay, okay. Let's, let's see. Let's see if we can figure it out that way. Mark. Hey, good chill. Allie, is that you? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, there's 31, 41, 43 left in your road sign budget for the year, just so that you know. Well, I just barely opened it up to see it. <laughs> okay. I just wanted to let you Thank know. Thank you. Yep. Can you repeat, will you repeat that figure again, please? 3,000. Yep. 141, 43. Thank you. You're very welcome. And the new monies come in after uh, July. July 1st. Yes. So, right. So if you look at July's, we've got, make it easy, we got $8,000. Yep. So if we, if we, if we split, um, figuring doing half the, half the speed times this summer and then roll out and do the other half the following summer, that leaves Mark money to do his signs as well, I think. Sounds like a good plan. That 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 sound reasonable to you, Mark? Yeah, sounds a lot better than losing all my money out of my signs. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, see, you're wise up there, Mark. Okay. <laughs> okay, we got a sign. Oh my goodness, all kinds of plans. How about Fitch Hill resurfacing with the water project? I think I think that is subject to change, but I haven't heard anything directly from uh, Carol Robertson. The what Mark's talking about is kind of what everybody's talking about with essential services. Do, do include transportation uh, networks like highways, but then they're they they seem to be refining that every week to critical infrastructure or you know things done for emergency purposes so i don't i don't know if the uh contractors that we think are available are going to start to not be available when we call so i think mark's correct he's got to check that out because if contractors aren't available or they're going to be reduced um because of covid stuff then we're, we're kind of stuck on all this stuff <laughs> really so i think Ron, if you, I I talked to John this morning from the village, and that all kind of almost sounds like it's about put on a back burner right now. Their whole water there you go. Fit, they're not I was going to say that. So I do know right now everything's up in the air on that. So that one's going to be definitely up in the air for us till we figure out what they they're doing. Yeah, they're getting in trouble with people up here on the hill. If it's hill, they're they're not signing there papers and i know last time i talked and i think ellie you helped me down there i think there was only four on the list yeah i know that there was a couple up here yeah, they're having a hard time they don't want to get up their rights of going across their property or whatever i did hear that right. but, yeah so they're kind of really back burner and things right now because of this whole COVID thing as well, I guess, as far as doing your bids and everything else and the actual footwork on it. Sounds like it's getting delayed. That's what I've heard too, Mark, and it sounds like it's gonna be. But well, I was gonna say never aren't they under some tremendous time pressure because of anyway, never mind. Okay, not our problem. We'll figure out what to do with the chill and reclaiming whenever they figure out what they're doing. Right, I'll change okay, the until they figure it out. Yeah, yeah. How about the prospect street turnaround? That 
we could probably still work on, but I would rather make sure we were going to pave Fitch Hill at the same time because of we're going to yeah, spend right. so much more money trucking everything in. So I'd like to have those two yeah, piggyback okay. off each Put them other. Together. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Mark, How about, Mark can How about, I ask oh, you this question? Yep. Yeah. If they don't do Fitch Hill, would it be wise to look at that up there, the Centerville up there by Jeff Miller's? Um, could, but it's still coming out of the same. Well, the fact, I mean, I'm just, yeah. I'm just throwing out the paper. Yeah, yeah, we have to look into it. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Um, okay. How about the town garage repairs? That was another question we had. We're trying to still spend down and and follow the voters' wishes by spending the forty seven thousand five hundred dollars. I think we're down into the thirty somewhere, but um, we need to have some. We really need to finish that and spend that by by winter so that we can go to town meeting day and just report that we finished the three year project of garage repairs. So, does that mean that uh, that addition gets put on, or is that something separate for the wash bay? We hope uh, it means it gets put. On. <laughs> yeah, I don't, whatever happens, I think it's you know whether we need to find more money for that or whether it's a cost issue that's going to modify things uh, where the money goes to other improvements. I I really don't know what the next priority is. I know that anything less than 40,000 is, is you're gonna take a DOC project to add anything to that building, right? I mean, I don't, well, I don't know. Reason, yeah, the reason why I said that is uh, I just happened to be working right next to the uh, work camp. So I have somebody in my pocket in the sense to, uh, to talk to about it and I'll get an idea of uh, where they're headed and what they've got planned uh, for contracts and stuff. And if it's something that they'd be interested or in, in, interested in entertaining, um, possibly doing that work. Where, where, where does the the whole oil separator thing come in? Okay, I've I've talked um, <clears throat> with Roger um, about that, and he says he's got the plans at home. I've called and left messages asking Roger to. To bring him in, so I'm hoping that he'll uh, provide those to me in the day in a day or so. Because I, th I think that's one of the big things I've heard forever that that's what the state's going to get us on if we don't get that done, like four years ago. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I will uh, I will take it upon myself to uh, um, probably uh, may have to go over and knock on the door and take ste uh, steps back from his door and just ask him if he can get them for me. Yeah, yeah, we definitely need that. Okay. Now, Ron, you said you um, you 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 paid that, right? What was the um, engineer's name or i was civil engineering associates I paid him about a fourteen hundred dollars about a year ago okay fourteen hundred a year ago yeah uh, okay fourteen okay <clears throat> so uh, we could i don't know I, okay i'll just leave it there yeah, I think, Ron, it doesn't hurt to give them a call and ask them to ship us a copy of the plans, too, in case it takes forever to get them from Roger. Uh, yeah, I could do that. I think uh, a guy named Charlie Levanway worked on it, too, so I can see if he's still around. Okay. I'm fine with that. Yeah. Which, get, get some of these things moving, because it's all right now, everything's on standstill, but uh, as some place, <laughs> it's going to be like a giant ice 
ice jam, you know, at some point things are going to start to give and contractors are going to want to go back to work. Um, they're going to be ready to go back to work so that if we, you know, I think it behooves us to get as many projects as we can sort of ready to go and to go out to bid sometime when that date opens again. I'll have those plans agree. within the week. I'll have those plans within the week. Thank you very much. Brian, we're kind of loading a lot up on you. If you want, you know. Um, I, 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 uh, <laughs> I understand what you're saying, but I, I know how to put the brakes on too, but it, so far, uh, everything's going smoothly. I have okay, well, that's good. Well, you know, if you're just sitting around there, we got, we got Roly sitting over here who says he's not doing anything, you know, and <laughs> got putting him to work. You give him too much, you know, too much free time and his wife will throw him out. Yeah. <laughs> I <suspect laughs> it's like, by the time, <laughs> by the time we're, we're, the end of this, there may be a lot of divorces. <laughs> we'll, we'll do we'll we'll do Shelly a favor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, Mark, how are you with all this? Huh? Okay. Um, next one, um, annual liquor license renewals. They get the the fork and gavel for their outdoor consumption. Yeah, that's a error on the agenda. It's really ten bends. Uh, we did fork and gravel uh, gavel last time. So moved. For Second. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. Uh, I see Kim's still online. Did you yep. want to yep. talk about signatures? I do, need, I do need everybody to sign that before I can send it to the state or they won't process it. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in a manila envelope with um, a, a select board as the title of it. I'm going to thumbtack it to the bulletin board outside um, at some point. If you guys can stop by and grab that and sign it, that'd be great. Yep, I'll do that. I'll, I'll check it every morning to make sure I know who signed it and who has it. And when I see the because is Roger Berry on the call? No. 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 Okay, so as soon as I see the four signatures of the people who are on the call, then I'll know that it's done and I can send it in. You're going to put it out there today or are you there yep. today? Yep, I, I am here and I'll put it in an envelope uh, tonight and thumbtack it to the board. Okay, I'll get it tomorrow morning first thing. Okay, thank you. Super. Okay, thank you. I'll do it just okay. after. Okay. We'll, okay, don't run into each other. <laughs> Um, what else do we have, Ron? I don't have anything else. I just want to make a, a couple announcements, I guess. Uh, what we're trying to do with these meetings and with emergency management is to, uh, we're posting information uh, in one of two places. One is the homepage of the website. So you can get the current call-in information for the next meeting. So if you're running around town or want to let people know just generally to uh, that it might be interested in select board meetings and participating by phone, they can always just click on the home page. And if we have the phone conference set up, the information will be posted at the top of that page. And then on the emergency management page, which is uh, a new page that we added under town departments, uh, we're adding all of the federal and World Health Organization notices, as well as state of Vermont notices, uh, the town office and building information, those kind of things. So that we're trying to put everything on one page, but at least on the home homepage, uh, we're, we'll put the call in information. So next meeting, which right now is April 20th, um, we'll try to get front porch forum notice out and things like that. So more people can join you other than just the directed email that we sent out today to participants. Uh, general public people can call in and then listen in or participate as well. Sounds good. Um, well, well, we need to schedule another meeting because if we find out how much of a total package on the Centerville Road would will be. Um, if we then we need to make a decision and Ron will find out if we if we wanted to do a bond 
how we would do that or come up with some other clever ideas for how we pay for this. Um, yeah, I think we can call that um, as it as it develops. There's there's a couple of big unknowns like our contractors even available. So let's let's let Mark do his thing. I'll, I'm going to work with Watershed Consulting on those three culvert questions. And if things start to pull together and we talk about the funding part, then we'll have answers. I don't I don't want to just set a meeting without knowing that we're going to have new information that's useful. Right. Okay. Sounds good. Um, yep. Brian, how, how does timing for meetings work for you and your work schedule? Thank you. Um, actually, it turned around. It's meant to be. I, uh, they first told me Wednesdays and uh, Thursdays were going to be my days off, and it got changed to Mondays and Tuesdays. So Monday and Tuesdays okay. um, are going to be fine uh, for doing this. Okay. Okay. All right. I've, schedule. Anything changes, obviously, let us know right away. Yeah, I am working the second shift, so the best time to reach me is probably between eight and uh, and noon. If anybody needs to reach me. Okay. Okay. We got anything else, or are we all in good shape? I'm good. If if we're if we're all good, we did it in an hour and a half. <laughs> I'll I'll just add in that if uh, if Mark French uh, or anyone else for that matter um, wants to have a meeting uh, like this with uh, any contractors or anything like that, um, they can let myself or Ron know and and I can set up the meeting um, for them and uh, and host it. Great, thank you so much thank for you, doing. Carol. Oh, you're yeah, fine. I, I want to thank I want to thank Carol too. She's done a great job. Yep, very good job. Thank no, you, no, Carol. Okay. Halloween storm. <laughs> Carol. Yes. I don't know where you were on the Halloween storm. I need all your help. <laughs> <laughs> they better go there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this would be a good time to move to a journey. One question I have what? is on the agenda. Do you have a possible executive session uh, listed? Are you doing that or not? Mm, no, we sort of that's that's always there in case we need it. Right. Okay. So you don't need it because it would be a little bit nope. different today. Yeah. Yeah. No. Nope. No, nope, we don't. That's that sort of that's an always other business and a possible if something comes up and we need it. But nope, we're we're good today. Okay. So I make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor, thank you guys. Say bye. 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 Okay. Everybody, everybody stay, stay safe. Stay safe. Have a good night. Thank, thank you. Everybody. Bye. -bye.